I've got a bunch of mailbag stuff here. So I've got seven items or so. Let's see what I've got. Could be some interesting stuff. I know I've got a review item in here. Bit of an interesting contraption. It's a puller. So basically what you have is these little tabs and you glue them onto a surface and then use this as a puller to pull against them. Pretty simple process. It's got adjustable depth I think. Something like that, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so these are actually for pulling dents out of panels, bodywork on vehicles, that sort of stuff. It's quite appropriate really since what happened on the weekend. But uh, yes, I thought I got them because I thought it'd be handy for something one day. Yeah, similar than I thought. So basically you glue these little pieces onto the bodywork. But I, I was expecting to come with some adhesive, so you actually got the complete kit, but I guess not. I guess they expect you to supply your own. I'm not quite sure what that should be because it should be something that dries quite quickly and will come off the paint again afterwards. So doing like paintless um, dent repair, so you don't have to you know, grind a panel and stuff like that and just stick these on and pull the dent back out. I've seen some videos on YouTube on the weekend, I dented the back of the bus again. The rear boot lid, when I put the gas strut on not long ago, um, the gas strut's a bit powerful and anyway, it flicked up and it moved too far. I overextended its hinge and hit the back of the bus and it's put a little dent in the one in the back where the top of the lid hit it. So I've got a dent to pull out. How convenient. I bought a whole bunch of stuff recently for the project I'm working on. I'm hoping some of it is in these, we'll see. What's this? Nice packaging. Oh right, okay. This is a e-paper display. So my intention is to use these on the project, hopefully. Because of power losses, that sort of stuff, and ease of reading it in daylight. And for well, you know, you can read these pretty well in daylight, rather than an LCD display, which can be quite hard. So I've got some of these to play with, just a couple of them. They're relatively expensive compared to like an LCD display and a bit more involved setting them up I think. I've never used one before so we'll find out. So there'll be links to these down below anyway. Get out of the packet and have a look at it. So there's the actual board. It's got a little speaker I think that is with it as well. SD card slot on the side. Some several buttons on it. I don't know much about it. I saw the LCD display I thought well, that looks like a nice little project thing. It's got built-in Wi-Fi. I'm not quite sure what chip that is. ESP32. Here we go. And it's also got the expansion header too for this project so this may be something I can use as part of my project I don't know yet either way I thought it would be a good thing to get I don't see any labelling about what these pins are there must be some documentation online somewhere so anyway the website's on there so I should be able to find it and obviously it must work because they put their logo on it if it didn't work it'll be on there Let's see what this is Okay, this is a review item for Banggood. So thank you very much Banggood for sending this to me. I'll be doing a proper review video on this. In fact, by the time you see this mailbag video, I would have already done a review video probably two or three weeks ago. So if you haven't seen it, go back and look for it. I might even put a link down below for it. As you can see, it's a Mr. Signal multifunction generator. Looks like quite an interesting piece of gear. I think it's about 160 US, something like that, for this thing. Comes in a nice bag. Manuals and stuff in the side there. And here it is. Not very big, is it? It's got four connections on the top. Com, out, in, in, which is com, uh, in, negative, in, positive. Make more sense. And I think it's got a lithium cell or something in it. USB port on the bottom. On off button. RS-485, apparently. Push on button. And it's on. So basically it's like a calibrator thing. And it can output different signals. So part of this is thinking, oh, it would be a good little thing to play around with to check accuracy um, compared to the other calibration instruments I have. And that sort of stuff. So there'll be a big review video on this. It's obviously going to take me a little while to play around with it and figure it out. It's also measures voltages as well. Current, I think that's current voltage. Um, it's like a process calibrator. I believe something like that anyway. We should check that video out. I'm not going to show too much now. So these are the different options, well, different things they can do, depending on which model it is. I can't which model this particular one is. I guess we'll find out. Current output, voltage output, simulator, transmitter output. Transmit. Frequency, PWM speed output, thermocouple, millivolt output, resistance uh, output, 24 volts loop current measurement. Current input, voltage input, frequency input, thermocouple input, and resistance input. And these are apparently extensions or something. Um, other things they can do. I'm not going to read everything out, but it looks pretty interesting. Next thing. I think I know what's in here already. I'm even cutting it back. Oh, no, I missed it. No, I've completely ruined it now. No, that's, that's it, it's done. I've cut into the box. I can't cut it. Oh, yeah. I had to get a real knife. This won't do. Here we go. It is a battery pack for MacBook. This is for the is it 2009, I think it is. 2008, 2009 MacBook Pro 15 inch. Yeah, there you go, 15 inch. A1281 is the battery model. It's not obviously off the market, not Apple original. Try getting one these days. Yeah. It's a 10 year old machine. 
battery started showing some signs being weird. Sometimes the computer will slow down, something has got some sensor issues on the battery. It'd generally be okay, but suddenly it does be a bit weird. So I'm going to replace the battery because I know the battery did have some strange charging behaviours previously. So I need to just replace it and see what happens. So, nothing too exciting. So here, let's get this in. We've got some micro USBs. Yep, good end. And we've got three modules. What are these things? Uno's. Fake, fake Uno's. Arduino Uno's. But it's got a uh, micro USB on there. DC 12 volt input, or DC input, I should say. And it's got standard pin headers on here for the Uno pinout. And it's all labelled up just like you expect. So I've only had one Uno left. I thought I'll, I'll get a few. I might use them on something soon. So I thought I'd stock up again. Also with the tax kicking in, I thought I'd get some whilst they're a little bit cheaper before the tax did get a chance to kick in. So they're getting them in six months' time, I've got to pay a little bit more. Excellent. That's what I was hoping for. So we have some normal modules. I've been buying a selection of stuff recently because I wasn't quite sure exactly what I was going to need. So you've got some e-byte ones, which are quite chunky things. You've got some options in there for M O and M1. I would need to read the manuals on there, so I haven't actually done that yet. OS485 output and OS232 outputs, or inputs, outputs, communication protocols. And here's the antenna connection, and here are antennas. It's come with four, because I've got two modules like this. I've got this in case I need this particular one. I think you can take it off, you don't need it. And you've got these other lower modules here too. I've actually been having a hell of a time with trying to get this law system up and working. I've bought some modules, which I've got on the desk underneath the pile of stuff, which I'm going to show you right now. And I've got these ones as well now. So the ones I've already purchased before, which I've been trying to get going, I've been trying now for, well, nearly a week. And I can't get the bloody things to work. It just won't work. I've had the ESP32 on there using example code and stuff like the Arduino RDE, and that is cannot communicate with ASPI. It doesn't matter if I'm using the um, VSPI or HSPI, or manually designate the pins for the SPI connection and all that sort of stuff. It just does not matter. It just won't work. It's been driving me nuts. I spent hours and hours on it. I just can't figure out why. I can't see a reason for it. The only thing I can really think of now is that the modules are no good. So it's good now that these other modules have arrived, because now I've got another thing to try. Now you can see on here, these ones aren't SPI, these ones are serial. So it's got RX and TX marked on those pins. So it's a different interface as well, which may be good, may be bad, I don't know. Again, I didn't really know what I needed, so I purchased different kinds. So I've got these ones here, which is obviously serial. These ones here, I believe, are serial as well, because it's got the IST32, which may need to be done. There'll be links for these down below, and I'll probably let you know if I ever get them working. I hope so. Upside so down. Which ones fall out? It's an e-byte one. So it's an... E32868T30D, so these are 868 megahertz. Did this one say what it was? This one's the 433 version. So again, I've got different frequencies available to me here, so I, I've got a selection of both frequency ranges in case I'm going to have to spread them across ranges for different functions or something. I really don't know yet. It is a couple of solar panels. Yeah, <laughs> because I have to figure out how to hook these up. It says plus and minus here. I guess that means those are connections I have to solder onto here. I was thinking of these for the project I'm working on. If I have space to put a solar panel to help top up batteries so the batteries can last longer, if I need to, then I've got these solar panels I can use to um, just provide a little bit extra current because the actual devices won't be using much. The battery, battery powered. They should last for a couple of days anyway, what they're doing. I thought if I get a solar panel, it might just mean I don't have to recharge them manually. It might just be able to top itself up whilst it's sitting there. We'll see. Nothing exciting. Now hit subscribe, click the bell icon, all that sort of stuff, and comment down below anything you want to talk about. Especially Laura, because this has been driving me nuts, these bloody Laura modules. Actually, I'll show you those. Here are they. Let's get the right ones. These Laura modules here. These have been driving me nuts. If you've got any experience with these, let me know. Because I can't get the damn thing to work. These things here. Oh, of course, I turn it around and it shows it back with the other one. Six one two seven six. So I've tried two different modules and they both had the same result, not worked. No communication via SPI. So I'm at a bit of a loss as to what's going on with those. Because they should work, but they don't. I've spent many hours on it and they should just go. Yeah. Can't win. Catch you later. Comment down below if you've got any experience.